Hey everyone, my name is Jamie Lee. Welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for clicking on this video today. If you do not already know what We Are Tala is, it is a activewear brand that was released recently by Grace Fit UK. Um, you might know her from her Instagram or her YouTube channel, but she is the one who released the Grace Fit guides and also now has the new brand BND. If you are interested in information about the Grace Fit guides, I have done a video on them already. I'll link it above here. Um, if you're interested in learning more about the BND weight loss plans and nutrition plans, I am going to be doing a video on those probably in the next week or so. It was actually going to be this week's video, but I ended up receiving the Tala clothing, so I figured I might as well do that first, especially because there is a restock coming up on May 31st. So before we even get into this video at all, I guess I would like to preface this by saying the cool thing about We Are Tala is that it is a brand obviously started by a very young woman who's still in university. Um, she has put a lot of love and effort into this to try and make it a sustainable brand that uses recycled plastics, um, trimmings off of other companies' materials, and just generally tries to use very ethical practices in their factories and make sure that they pay people a livable wage. So all of those things are obviously great. They're things that bigger companies should be doing and just aren't. If you look at the prices of We Are Tala and all of their stuff, I would say most of them are like either in line or a little bit cheaper than the huge activewear brands. Especially if you live in the UK, I would say that they're definitely like on point. Obviously, I live in Canada. It is more expensive. The exchange rate is not very good for us right now. Keep in mind that obviously once you apply that exchange rate, it is a lot more expensive. Now, I have a couple of things that I would like to discuss about the launch how it went, the glitch, all of that good business. If you are not interested in hearing about that more ranty side of this video, I will include a timestamp here. Please feel free to skip ahead to the actual try on and talking about the clothes, the prices, how much I'd pay for customs, all of that. And now I'm going to be free to rant. Okay, so I've got my phone out just so that I make sure that I don't misspeak on any of the dates or times or any of that that went on with this launch. So We Are Tala launched on Tuesday, May the 7th, and it was at 2 p.m. in Eastern Standard Time, where I live. I believe that was 7 p.m. in British time. So I was on the site exactly at 2 p.m. I was so excited and I got a bunch of stuff. I did not get any of that stuff. So I got the leggings in both black and gray in a size medium because I did see that she was saying they are a little bit tight. Make sure if you're kind of between sizes you get the bigger size and I really wanted to make sure that they were not see-through because I can't stand when leggings are super super see-through. So I got a medium black and gray. I got the Aster crop top, which is the long sleeve crop that has a zip in the front in black. And then I also got the bra, which is just like a little sports bra, also in black. And I got both of the tops in size small. So I placed my order so fast. I know that there were a lot of people who complained that they were getting a glitch where they would put stuff in their cart really fast and it would change their sizes to extra small. I did not have that happen. I put all the items in my cart and checked out within one minute. I received my confirmation at 2.01 p.m. saying I had spent 155 pounds, so British pounds, that's once again significantly more expensive here. I believe at the time the exchange rate was like 1.72 times the amount and then it basically said here's a link to your order whatever so i had entered my phone number because it asked for email or phone for some reason i read phone and thought it was going to ask me for my email later so i just entered my phone number i had already used a shopify site for ordering from fashion nova so it already had all my information saved i checked out took one minute as that day progressed, and even the following day, maybe even the next two days, 
it was clear that a lot of people had been affected by this glitch where they had put clothes in their cart they had thought that they were putting like a medium or a large or whatever and it was actually putting extra small so a lot of people were really frustrated they had paid for things in extra small and obviously this creates the issue where oh well if everybody bought all of the extra small but also all of the large and extra large and mediums and smalls are sold out now because everything's sold out pretty fast um what's going to happen with these people like are they just going to have to get the orders refunded and there will be extra smalls available now what's going to happen so there was very little information um i believe it was on the wednesday or the thursday so two maybe two or three days later um, Grace Fit on her Instagram put basically a little thing telling people to swipe up and fill out a survey saying if your order was correct or not. So obviously my order was correct. So at this point, everything would suggest, including multiple things from her Instagram, I wish I had a screenshot of them, but I did not, said that if your order was correct, they were going to be shipping it out within one day. So clearly that didn't happen or I wouldn't be having this discussion with you. But eventually what ended up happening was them kind of like backstepping on that and saying, oh no, like even if you don't think your order was affected by the glitch, it was. So we're going to need to basically cancel a bunch of people's orders. We'll let you know if we can fulfill it or not. I mean, that's obviously very stressful, but the more stressful thing was it took them like days to even get to that point. And then once they got to that, instead of saying, like, there was just no information. There was a real lack of transparency in terms of, like, what was going on, um, what sizes and particular styles of clothes were actually affected by this. To an outsider, it seems like perhaps either they or whoever was supposed to be setting the stock limits on their website did not do so correctly. Um, Usually when you have an online site, say you have 100 units of black leggings size small, you'll set that so then once you've sold 100 units of black leggings size small, it won't let anybody add them to their cart or make a purchase anymore. So it seems like what was actually happening was they only had 10,000 units total and obviously the demand was way higher than that. Like I think at one point there were 100,000 people on the site. So once they sold out of the 10,000 units, it just continued selling. It never actually told people that anything was sold out, which I do find interesting because when I was making my purchase, I do believe that at the end, so I made my purchase and then I went back in to just like look if anything was sold out yet. And there were a couple things that looked like they were already sold out. So I'm not entirely sure about that. Obviously, I'm just looking at it from a consumer's perspective. But it took days. So like I said, I ordered on the 7th and then they kept saying, oh, by the end of the day on the 9th, you'll know what's happening with your order. Oh, by the end of the day on the 10th, you'll know what's happening with your order for sure, 100%. And I still hadn't heard anything. So finally on Saturday, May 11th, I sent an email to them saying, hey, I just would like to know what's going on with my order. Like, because they had basically said, oh, there's going to be a restock next week and it's a full restock. So if you have to get your order refunded, don't worry. Like, we're going to give you priority in this restock, which in my mind doesn't make a lot of sense, but we'll get to that. So essentially, I sent this email and like within one minute of sending the email, you can tell that they clearly looked at it and went, oh shit, like we missed this person's order and just sent me a text refunding it. Which once again, I checked out within one minute. I got four things, um, obviously in popular sizes, I would say like a small for the bra and like the aster crop top, I would say are probably the most popular sizes. But I'm not going to share my order number because I feel like that's probably like there's got to be a way to track me down via that. But it was very, very low. So I would argue probably one of the first few hundred people max. So obviously that's very frustrating. It was getting refunded, whatever. And then we start hearing information about like, oh, don't worry, like we're going to send you something for the restock so that you're able to get priority access like hours before. But in my mind, if you have our stock that we want in the items that we wanted, 
for the next Tuesday or whatever day it was, why wouldn't we have just got it originally? <laughs> like, why wouldn't you just wait and send it to us then? So I'm obvious, like, clearly they don't have anything available that people actually wanted. So it's just going to be like whatever leftover merchandise. It's not going to be the actual items that people wanted and that they were sold out of. And the reason why everybody's orders were getting refunded. The restock was scheduled for the following week. And they basically said, hey, by the end of like the day before, everybody will have received information about what pre-sale code you should use. I never got one. So I sent them an email the day of the restock. I'm sending them emails. I'm sending them messages on Twitter. I'm sending them Instagram DMs, which is all things that they told you to do. Finally, I had to actually DM Grace Beverly, the CEO of the company herself. And then one of her assistants was able to get me a code, which also is very ridiculous because once again, like there's just this huge lack of transparency and information. And I understand new company, very difficult to try and like sort out all these problems. You don't have a ton of customer service. I get it. I've been there. But you have to understand that like the more information you provide to people, the happier they'll be. If you provide people with an overabundance of information about what's going on, why certain things became unavailable, why like once again, calling something a glitch over and over again is not a good way. Like that's not a good enough explanation to most people. You need to be saying, here's what happened. Something happened on the website. We oversold our stock because of X, Y, Z. We're going to do it better next time. We've figured out a different way to set up the site or something. So I finally get my code. Great. It's like an hour before the pre-sale at this point. So I log on the exact second the pre-sale starts. And of course, there's like absolutely nothing that I had originally ordered was available. Not a single thing. So what I ended up being able to get was a pair of burgundy leggings in size medium. It seems the burgundy was very unpopular because it was basically the only color that was left in every size. Um, a burgundy bra and then a gray pair of the like bike shorts which I ordered before I did that last airy haul. So I did not know how terrible I look in bike shorts. So we'll see if they're okay or not. But I still wanted to be able to test the quality of the merchandise. So I still did make a purchase. But there were a lot of people who couldn't buy a single thing. There was nothing in their size. I'm going to just very quickly talk about a couple of things that I think that they could have done better. And this is not once again, it's not shitting on the brand. It's not me saying that they're terrible and I'm never going to buy from them again. And it's not me saying that you shouldn't give them a chance. This is basically just my two cents as somebody who studied business in school, who has actually built websites that are meant for retail operations. This is just kind of what I think. And once again, is only my opinion. So you can be disagree with me all you want. That's fine but please no personal attacks. In my opinion, the way that they handled the situation was awful, honestly abysmal. Obviously you'd never want that kind of situation to happen in the first place. It's your first launch, you want it to go off without a hitch, that never happens, absolutely never happens. There will always be something that goes wrong and you need to have a plan in place for when something absolutely blows up in your face. For new launches, they always, always, always recommend that you have like triple the manpower, at least for like the day and the couple of days after that you think you need. If you think you need six customer service people, you need to try and triple that because there are always going to be so many problems and like people aren't going to understand the website or people are going to have technical issues or they buy the wrong size or whatever, you need to have extra people on board. The other thing, transparency once again, when something does blow up, you need to have people ready to immediately respond with one consistent message. That did not happen in this case. There were a lot of different people who seemed to be responding like, Twitter versus the Facebook Grace Fit Guide group had like two or three different admins or people who work on the customer service team responding to people, but they were all saying different variations. Their messages were very different. They would try and say, oh, don't worry, you're going to get a refund by today. Oh, we're going to honor all of the orders that were correct. But then people would be backstepping. And I understand that you're trying to give like 
the most correct information up to like what you have at the time but you need to have one central way to blast out that information to every single person that ordered what if somebody ordered and wasn't in the grace fit group what if somebody ordered and didn't follow her on instagram like there were different uh, pieces of information being sent to everyone if i did not reach out via instagram twitter and email i would not have gotten a response about whether my stuff was getting refunded or not like they're just they weren't sending me any information even by the time cut off that they had said oh yeah we've sent stuff to everybody and they kept saying over and over again like oh well we've sent information to 95 percent of people well that's not good enough though you need to have sent it to 100 percent of the people you need to have a way to blast an email to every single person that's purchased and if you can't do that on your own you need to get in touch with somebody from spotify from shopify sorry or from whatever third party company you use to set up your site and get them to help you and i understand they're not going to be as responsive to you because you are tiny in relation to the big businesses that they are used to dealing with your business is not a lot to them so it's not going to be as important the only way to make it important is to be in their face literally 24 7 and that feels horrible to do i know it does but when you're in an emergency your emergency is probably 99 percent of the time more important than like a big company's upgrade that they're doing that they could surely lend a couple people to your case but you have to make it very clear that it is an emergency now the way that they actually handled it with just refunding what appeared to be random people clearly is not a good solution in my opinion there were two ways that they could have gone about it number one is refund everybody every single order gets refunded they figure out the problems with the website and they do another launch and would that have made people angry? 100% it would have, but I would argue that that's probably the most fair solution. Number two would have been to ask people, send every single person who made an order who you're not going to be able to fulfill, send them an email, let them know what the approximate restock date is going to be and allow them to opt to either get a full refund or to wait for the restock and have all of their stuff shipped at once. A lot of companies do that. I know I saw at one point Grace or someone on her team responding saying they didn't want to hold on to people's money and like that was gonna, that was against what they wanted to do. But there are a lot of people who probably would have preferred that option. If you put the option in the customer's hands, you're no longer the bad guy. It's up to them to say, oh, well, I, I didn't really have the money anyway. So you know what? This is probably for the best. Or for them to say, you know what? I don't care, keep my money, um, you're not gonna have it for a month and a half, fine by me, like I don't need it that fast anyways, it's just I'm really excited to get your products. I do think that that probably would have been the best option. With what they decided to do in terms of like refunding what appeared to be random people and shipping stuff out to others, I think the only way to make that really fair was yes, do the pre-sale code where you give them a code for the next full restock rather than just giving you a code for like two days after you just found out your order got refunded that isn't going to buy you any of the stuff you want wait and you allow them to use that code for the next full restock so that they actually have a chance to get what they want i think the thing to remember about any of these options is like arguably they might be worse from a business standpoint but they do make customers happier i can't even count the number of people i've seen saying oh i'm not buying from the brand until they figured everything out like i'm gonna wait three or four restocks to see if they can figure out their shit stuff like this scares people away and if your product is amazing and i hope it is i've got it sitting right here i can't wait to try it if your product is amazing hopefully people will come back to it but you really need to try and keep your customers happy especially at the beginning for a new company so that's all I'm going to say about that. If you experience the glitch, if you experience getting your order refunded, or if you actually did get your order, I would love to talk about it in the comments below. I would love to hear your opinions. Obviously, this is a little bit ranty, so there are probably things I left out. I was obviously frustrated by it, more so because it, once again, felt like your options as a customer were really taken away. 
and it felt like they were kind of just making arbitrary decisions and I think part of that the reason it felt like that was just once again the lack of transparency. So without any further ado, I'm gonna start trying on some clothes. All right, so without any further ado, this is the Iris bra and the Zinnia leggings, both in burgundy, as it was the only color I could get in my sizes. Um, I got the bra in a size small. I will say that it's like pretty stretchy, so I probably honestly could have even gotten extra small if I wanted it to be like really supportive. Um, for me, this will be fine. I wear a 34C in most bras, and this will be fine to wear for cardio at the gym or any type of hopping activity. Um, I do have pretty perky boobs though, like they sit pretty high, so I generally don't have to worry about like a lot of bouncing. I know like if you have slightly lower hanging boobs, that might be a bit more of a problem and you would probably want to size down. It's not tight at all around here. It sits very comfortably. Um, the back is a crossed strap and then it just has a little keyhole. Um, I think the bra is fine. I would say it is not exceptional. It's pretty standard gym wear. It's pretty soft. Um, I definitely have other sports bras that I prefer but I think that this one's fine. I think part of the reason that I don't love it is just because of the color, which once again, I am not somebody who would usually wear burgundy anything for some reason. Like I just think it looks a little odd on me because I'm very pale, I have green eyes, and I just think that it's not the most flattering color for me, but I digress. So these are the leggings. I got these in a size medium. I think I should have got a small, they aren't very compressive on me, and I know I saw a lot of people online talking about them being very, very strong compression. I don't find that at all. I find them very soft, very stretchy. The material is unlike anything I've ever had in leggings before. I would argue that probably the closest pair of leggings I have in terms of like feel and like how they fit on my body to these would be the Gymshark ombre leggings that I have that are like the gray, they're like dual tone gray. I'll include a picture of those here, but I think that these are kind of similar. They might even be a little bit softer and a little comfier because those ones do have quite a lot of compression, although I do have those in a size small. So these might be similar if I had them in small as well. Obviously the waistband is very high but it's not, once again, like it's not a lot of compression in it. Um, it's pretty loose, very comfy. I did, when I just put these on, do a squat test in the mirror, and I feel like you can definitely see through them, um, which is unfortunate, especially because they are very big on me. Like the stomach area especially is very, very loose. So if anything, like these should be very opaque. And like, they look pretty good on the butt, but I will do a squat test for you now, and I guess we'll see what happens. Yeah, I don't know. I definitely like the leggings. I would love to get them in gray and in black, just to try those colors, because I think that I would wear those more than burgundy. I think that the length is pretty good. This is the regular length and I am five foot one. I also have pretty short legs. So it hits me basically exactly at the ankle. That could also be partially due to the fact that I do have pretty big thighs too though. So if you have very like long stick like legs, it might be a little bit longer on you. As I was saying at the very beginning of this video, one of the cool things about this brand is the fact that it's sustainable. So the little tags that come with it are actually seed paper. So you can plant this in your garden and it will grow some sort of wildflowers, which is pretty cute. It also includes a little information tag that just basically has a few details about how much water you're saving, how much less CO2 is produced, how much percentage of this product is recycled material just for your information and to let you know that you are making a more sustainable choice than if you were to go buy like another pair of Gymshark leggings or a, 
even cheaper option than that. Like I said, I'll definitely have to get gray or black leggings, I think, to really see what my true opinion is. But like, I do think that they're a good pair of leggings. They're very comfy, they're very stretchy. Um, it is obviously just unfortunate that it is in a color that I don't see myself wearing all that often. All right, so these are the Hosta shorts, also in size medium, in the gray color. And once again, I personally think that I look hideous in bicycle shorts. I do not know why. They just don't suit me. Like regular length shorts look fine on me. These always look just awkward. And I'm not sure why that is. Um, the length is obviously pretty long on me. Uh, one that Part of that is just I have very short legs and I'm just a short person in general. The crotch is also just like so evident in these for some reason. Once again, I think I probably could have sized down. They are a little bit loose, obviously, from the side. And they're the same type of material as the leggings. They're pretty soft, they're pretty comfy. I actually think that these ones perform better in a squat test than the burgundy ones, which is odd because they're obviously a much lighter color. So I will do that for you guys quickly here. So yeah, I'm not sure about these. I guess I just don't really understand. Like I could see myself wearing these if I was going for a hike because I do hate the dreaded like chub rub when you're going for a really, really long walk. And especially if you've just shaved or you've just had a wax or whatever. So they could be good for that. I think the only way that I would feel comfortable doing that though is like with a big long shirt or a long sweater. Um, would probably make them look just a little bit better. I, I would probably wear these to the gym as well because I'm not there to look super nice and there to work out. So in the summer, we do often have problems with the air conditioning not working at my gym. So they might be good for that. So now let's quickly talk about the details, the prices, the shipping, customs and duties, etc. So this bra, the Iris bra, costs 26 pounds. Um, so once again, keep in mind, this is all British pounds. You would have to convert it to Canadian if you want to see what the actual price will be. The leggings cost 40 pounds and the shorts cost 28 pounds, which I will say for like a pair of like what I would consider these to be like pretty good workout shorts. I think that that price is fair. The bra I do think is expensive for buying it in Canada. I think it's pretty expensive. The leggings, I think that they're worth it. I just would probably stay away for buying another bra in the future because I do think that that's a little bit pricey. So for all three of my items, it cost me 108 British pounds. Um, shipping was 14 pounds, which is pricey. Um, that's a lot for shipping, especially because I paid for tracked shipping because I can't stand buying things internationally that are not tracked. So there was a slightly cheaper shipping option, but it was untracked and I wasn't willing to go that route, especially because there had already been so many problems with the initial sale. My order, the second order that actually ended up coming was placed on May 14th and it actually never even got dispatched at all until May 20th. So it took them six days to put these three things into a bag and actually prepared to send them off to be shipped. Once again, it's a new company. There are obviously problems, but so I ordered on May 14th and I got my items on May 27th. So I received them today, which is a Monday. So it did not take a super long time to get them, but I would still say that it, like, it took long enough for me to be a little bit apprehensive just because of the fact that there were so many problems with the initial sale. So it took about two weeks in total. When I received these things, I did not pay any duties. They just got put into my mailbox. So I actually didn't even know that they got dropped off. Um, nice to know. I don't know if maybe in the future I'll have to pay duties on it. They did write the correct dollar values in Great British Pounds on the front of the package. So perhaps I just will never have to pay duties on them. I'm not sure. Now, I would say that overall, I have a neutral view of We Are Tala, the company in general. 
there was such a mess <laughs> with the initial launch, with how they were refunding people, all of that, that it really tarnished my view of the company. And honestly, to the point where I wasn't even excited to receive my stuff today. But I do think that the clothing is good quality. We'll have to see once I wear it to an actual gym session. Uh, maybe I'll do a little check-in later this week or early next week just to let you know how it stood up at the gym, if I showed sweat through it, if anything ripped, if it didn't perform well, etc. But for now, I do think that they're good quality pieces and obviously the sustainability factor of them is awesome. So I do think that I'll purchase from them again in the future. Um, if you're somebody who like really needs your money and can't handle like potentially getting refunded or not getting it back in time or anything, I would maybe hold off one more restock and just wait and see how it plays out once like it's the mad dash and everybody's trying to get stock again. Just to be safe, if you're okay with potentially getting your order refunded or any funny business happening, I would say go for it. Um, the leggings especially I think are really, really good. I would highly recommend them. Probably not in burgundy unless that's your color, but I think that a gray pair of leggings, like if these were full leggings, I think that they would be adorable. Um, and I definitely am going to be trying to get my hands on one of these zip up, either the Zahara zip up like cropped um, sleeveless top or the long sleeve astro crop top because they both look absolutely adorable. And I think that they could even be cute with these shorts as like a little outfit. With all that being said, please, please, please let me know in the comments below if you bought anything, if you tried to buy anything, if you were affected by the glitch, if you want to buy something in the restock, I would love to hear from you and have a conversation about everything that happened in the comments below. Um, do you like any of the outfits? Do you like these shorts? Do you hate them? What did you think of the leggings? please let me know. I love hearing from you. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, hit the big red subscribe button and be sure to click the bell. I put out new videos every single Tuesday and it will notify you when they're live. And thank you guys so much for sticking with me through this video. I know it was a long one, but there was a lot of information to cover that happened in a short amount of time. And with all that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and the rest of your week. I love you and I'll see you soon. Bye.